I'm here with Matt, and he's going to show us Kodu. Hi, I'm Matt McLaren. I'm from Microsoft Research. And so Kodu started as a research project in uh, programming for small kids. Um, I have a daughter who's four, and um, and I know that you know I learned programming in 1980 on a mm -hmm. Commodore PET when there was really oh. nothing. Yeah, right. <laughs> when there was nothing else to do on the machine, but you'd get a game, you load it up, and it wasn't cool enough, so you you tweak it by programming, and it mm -hmm. came with the code. And um, today, there's so many things you can do on a computer that you know I was kind of like you know she might not get that sort of experience, and so we sort of started to investigate whether that was going to be an interesting research project. And what we found is that um, it seemed like there was an opportunity to make a breakthrough in both how easy programming could be and how easy creating games could be because mm -hmm. we know that you know if there's one reason why someone would want to do programming it's so they could create their own game yeah. so I'm going to show you is I'm just going to build a little teeny mini game here in Kodu oh, and cool. I'll show you how the programming works and I'll try to explain it but you know you'll be in video so you can pause if something goes <laughs> too fast <laughs> okay so um, what we're looking at here is just a little sample world and so Kodu comes with a bunch of sample worlds that are um, kind of you know an interesting terrain where you can go underwater and whatnot and, but intended to, to suggest some sort of gameplay or story, just to get people started creatively, because sometimes it's intimidating to have a completely blank screen. Um, so I'm gonna bring up the tools here, and um, from left to right, sort of the first one is, is play, to just run my game and see what's gonna happen. The second one is an object tool, which you use to put characters and buildings and walls and roads in, in the world. And there's some stuff for making hills and then for adding new terrain. You can make the land any shape you want. It's totally 3D. You can make racetracks and islands or whatever kind of level. Heart, a giant heart. Yeah, exactly. Um, we've had those. <laughs> we have the giant pink worlds with hearts everywhere, um, and we like them. Um, and um, you can also make a level that's entirely water if you just want to play with the submarines and boats and stuff like that. So let's just make a quick little shoot em up just so you can kind of get a feel for how the thing works. Um, so um, I selected the object tool, and you'd probably guess that's my cursor moving around. Um, so I'm just going to click to put a character here, and there's a bunch of different characters that are available, and they all have different capabilities. Some can jump, some can fly, some can swim. The turtle here I really like. He can fly, but he can also close up, and um, he becomes invulnerable, but then he can't fly, and he falls on the ground. <laughs> and so, so as part of it is like part of the puzzle is how do you create it, like a cool game that uses their unique characteristics. Mm -hmm. So it I'm gives them strengths and weaknesses. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's just it's all part of the fun. So I, I, I just put a flying saucer in here, and uh, we can uh, tint his color a little bit if we want. Um, and uh, purple's kind of nice. Ooh, that is nice. And then I'll lower him closer to the ground. And now if I went ahead and pressed play now, he wouldn't do anything because he doesn't have any programming. So it's kind of up to you to give him something to do. So I'm going to open the program editor. And the way this works is, um, is it's, what we're defining here is a rule. It's kind of a reaction for how this, this saucer responds to things happening in his world. Um, and he, we can have him do things like we could say, for example, gosh, if you see um, a rock, then maybe he's scared of rocks. So we're going to tell you, if you see a rock, then move um, away from it. Okay, and so that's a, that's a complete program right there, and that would totally work if we went and ran it. Um, and so what we have is like within the rule, there's this section which says what we're looking for, um, or listening for, or touching, or whatever. And then this part says what we're going to do when that thing happens. Um, and so we can use that same model um, to make a user-controlled character. So I'm going to say when someone does something with the gamepad, well, what do they do? And you press on the plus to add something mm -hmm. to your rule. So when the left stick moves. And I could say which player I want, because you can make a four-player game like this, but I'm just going to make a single-player game, because it's just a little demo. Um, and actually, if you're doing single-player, you don't even need to put that in at all. It just assumes mm -hmm. that. And here, here are t a couple of things that this character can do in response to the stick moving. So move is an obvious one. And then we can tweak it and say, you know, move quickly or slowly or up and down or whatever. Um, and then, since it's a game and we have to have some combat or something, um, <laughs> I'm going to use the right stick to um, shoot. Okay. And, um, so I'll shoot, and then I have all these options. I can like say what kind of damage it's going to do, and I can say what color my missile is, and let's go with the purple <laughs> missile so I'm color coordinated. Um, and then I can also say which direction he's going to go, or whether they're going to you know fly over hills or crash into the ground or whatever. But that's good enough right there. And then um, just to keep this quick, I'm going to open up what we call the tweak screen. Because um, okay. you saw that the programming UI is really friendly and colorful and, and easy to use. Um, the tweak screen is like if you want, really want to dig in and get into like change something really subtle about the character or whatnot. So the only thing I want to change, because I've done this before, is um, I want to make him shoot lots of missiles. Um, <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So he can, he can just kind of go nuts. <laughs> and it's kind of nice, although, you know, we really like, you know, having just sort of this, you know, plastic toy kind of look, we also really like to put a lot of work into the shaders and stuff like that. Yeah, we have, um, um, we actually managed to get um, 
uh, one of the lead graphics programmers from Rock Band is now working ah. on this with us, which is really fun because we're a teeny team. We're only four people. We're in research. And, um, and we're kind of an example of like, you know, the community games channel is really all about sort of independent developers. Yeah. And within Microsoft, since we're in research, we're not a product development organization, we almost kind of work more like an independent developer. Um, and um, okay, so now I've got my guy with lots of missiles and whatnot. So let's give him uh, something to battle against. So I'm going to put in this kind of mean looking fish. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, he's called Sushari, you know, because we want to make sushi out of him. Um, and um, so I'm just going to give him a really simple, um, um, uh, sort of monster or bad guy behavior. So I'm going to put him up a little higher in the, in the air so that he can reach the saucer. And I'll just program him just totally simple. If you see a saucer, then move towards it. I know I'm going through these kind of fast, but you can freeze frame no, to no, see what else is okay. in those menus. Um, and then also, if you see the saucer, then I want him to shoot. shoot <laughs> yeah. And we'll give him a different color missile. Um, we'll make them green. Actually, let's make them random colored. That's kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to hop back over here and uh, go ahead and play. And so now I can battle oh, oh. battle the fish. And um, oh, he got me. OK. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually I down. say because that was so easy, but <laughs> I'm just going to make him even meaner. And this is just a, a real quick thing to just to show you some of the depth that's built into it. Mm -hmm. Because it can seem really simple, but we've hidden a lot of like kind of you know, secret powerful features inside here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the tweak screen on this character and I'm going to make him what's called a creatable. Okay. And a creatable is just something that you can make more of them while the game's running. So I'm going to take this cloud because absolutely everything in, in Kodu is uh, programmable. And so I'm going to make this cloud one of the bad guys too. So oh. I'm going to program him. And he's just going to sit up here being a cloud. Um, but every, um, every two seconds, he's going to create something. Oh, wow. And... Um, and he can create, you know, for you know beginners, you know, he can create a star or coins or something like that, um, which you can then maybe use as power ups. Um, but here, since I made that fish creatable, mm -hmm. this cloud can now create fish, um, and they they drop into the world with all their programming. So we sit around. Oh, it looks safe. Oh my gosh, there's fish coming out of the sky. Oh. Um, <laughs> and, and they're all trying to kill you. <laughs> they're all trying to kill me. <laughs> And now just for, a, for just a little peek, um, kind of one last thing, is just to show you, um, um, you know, we like to show, you know, I, I personally like these worlds that are like green and fluffy, you know, with uh, blue skies and stuff like that. But you have a lot of control over, you know, you can make oh, wow. it happen in space or whatnot. And, um, and then all the effects, you know, sort of work with, um, with the different look in your world. So here it's kind of darker and you can see my missiles are lighting up the terrain and stuff like that. Oh, wow. And all the explosions are happening nicely. And, uh, and that's about it. So that's a quickie Amazing. introduction yeah. to Kodu. Um, How would you get Kodu? We're even going to be so, able to... Um, you'll be able to buy it um, through the um, um, Xbox Live uh, Community Games channel, okay. which Lisa was just showing you, since we developed this entirely on XNA. And um, we're also doing a lot of work um, with uh, kids in schools and after-school programs. Mm -hmm. We've been working with, um, with uh, 9 to 12-year-old girls who uh, really enjoy programming this. And I really love to hear you know, a little <laughs> girl say, look what I programmed. You know, It's just a really cool thing for us. Get them started young. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, before they learn it's not cool. You know. What? <laughs> well, thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So for more information about Kodu, Xbox, the experience, or anything else, check on kiwibox.com.